the marshmallow challenge. And the exercise is really simple. You get teams of uh, four or five to uh, break apart, to build the tallest freestanding structure out of the following ingredients. 20 sticks of spaghetti, uncooked, one yard of tape, one meter of tape, I was, did this in Europe uh, last week, uh, one meter of string and one marshmallow, and the marshmallow has to be on top as groups to build the tallest freestanding free structure out of these ingredients. I've done this, as I said, many, many times, and uh, it's really interesting. There are patterns emerge, patterns that emerge through different kinds of um, uh, participants. So who do you think really consistently, what professional group consistently does very, very poorly at the Marshmallow Challenge? Any, any ideas? Accountants, I heard. Engineers, I've heard. Anyone else? Lawyers, I've also heard. Well, at, in, on every measure of innovation, the diversity, the height of the structure, um, the, the, the nature of the collaboration, the group that consistently does the worst are recent graduates of business school, <laughs> MBA students. They suck. They're terrible. I've seen a fist fight. I've seen people um, Google and try to figure out what the hidden challenge is. They elbow and they say, I'm going to do this. OK, so um, they do consistently poorly. I'll park that idea for a second. So um, flip side, what, what group do you think consistently does really well? Kids? Engineers? Women? Women! Woo you know, I've actually never separated. That's a really good, uh, <laughs> um, Well, so, but on, uh, again, on every measure of innovation, the groups that, that consistently do well are recent graduates of kindergarten and grade one <laughs> and grade two. In fact, I'm sorry to say this, but they would have outperformed you. And look at their, their structures. Um, they're, you know, they, they look like giant palm trees and elephants and ants and, um, and you know, can all kinds of crazy structures that we don't see um, here in, in the, the diversity here. So a question might ask, well, and, well wait a th think about it for a second. So kids in grade one and grade two in kindergarten outperform a collaborative task um, compared with the people who are, will be running the financial world. So how come? Why? What is it about kids that allows them to outperform and to do the marshmallow challenge better than uh, many adults do? Not all, but many. They still have, still have imagination, absolutely. They don't, they don't overthink it. They don't uh, eliminate things conceptually beforehand. No preconceptions. I think those are all uh, absolutely valid, but I think there's uh, even a more central idea to it as, as well. So they play, they uh, don't have preconceptions, but there's actually even a, a fundamentally different way in which they work. And you can observe it if you just watch and uh, not listen, but just watch the body language. And the way um, um, most MBA students start off is they begin with a plan. They plan a big model, conception, and then they execute upon the plan. So everything is about delivering on the plan, and so they have one concept that they build at the very end. Kids, on the other hand, begin with the marshmallow. They start with the marshmallow, they generally don't talk, and they start sticking things in the marshmallow, and then the marshmallow falls over. And then they fix it, and they put more stuff in, and it falls over. And then they fix it, and they fix it, and they build several prototypes along the way. So they have several uh-oh and several ta-da moments along the way. They build um, early versions, and they study and they watch quite naturally through the act of play. So that simple version of going from, let's just see what works, to um, let's follow my plan, because that's the way I think it should work, makes all the difference in the world in this kind of innovation practice. So the designers in the room will know that this is the prototype refinement loop. This is, this is the iterative loop that designers and innovators continually go through. And it's an essential part of the innovation process. And our educational system is really geared to stop this. Our educational system is geared towards getting the right answer at the beginning and not going through this lively, exploratory, rich, messy process, which is really at the heart of innovation, really at the heart of being able to do something new of value that is inventive. In fact, 
contact this is invention. 